So, so far in the first two videos, in the first video, we solved that equation the usual way. In the second video, we changed that into a system of three first order differential equations, which formed this matrix equation, where A was this matrix. Now I need to diagonalize that, because the next step is I'm going to change that A into the diagonal form PD inverse of PZ plus F. So diagonalizing the matrix A. So I start with A, and I'm going to find A minus lambda I equal to zero. Or I could have written that the other way around, the negative wouldn't have mattered. So what have I got then? I'm just leaving it like that. I've got subtract lambda from the main diagonal. Well, the main diagonal would be negative lambda, negative lambda, negative lambda, simply because they were all zeros. So the rest will stay the same. 1, 0, 0, 1, and 6, and 7. Now, having written this down, that means I'm just going to proceed by normally working out the value of that determinant to get the characteristic equation, rather than the other technique, which is to go through the terms of the characteristic equation, have coefficients which are the determinants of the varying sizes of determinants on the main diagonal. So for this one, another thing I could do to make it slightly quicker is, it'd be handy if I just had a one in that top row. So you can use row or column operations to row reduce or column reduce a determinant and get the same result. So what I'm going to do, I think, is I'll take column one and add on lambda lots of column two. So that means negative lambda plus a lambda will give me a zero there. Zero plus a negative lambda times lambda is a negative lambda squared, leaving the rest alone, and a six plus seven lambda, and then a seven and a negative lambda. Just so that I've now got just one times its minor, because one's in a negative position, so it'll just be negative of, then missing out those, that will be lambda cubed, Minus, and one times that, that'll just be minus seven lambda minus six equals zero. Forgetting that negative just means I've got to factorize that. And that, of course, was exactly the same, notice, as this original equation here. So the solutions would be lambda plus one. If you wish to check back to that, I could do it again quickly. An obvious root of that is negative one using synthetic division. If negative one goes into that's a one, zero, negative seven, negative six. Rattling that negative one through the synthetic division, add down, multiply up, add down, multiply up, add down, multiply up. Gives me this as the quotient. Lambda squared minus lambda minus six equals zero. So that factorizes to lambda plus one. Lambda, lambda, 2, 3, the negative goes to the 3, that says they're opposites. So that you've got lambda equals negative 1, call that lambda 1. Lambda 2 is negative 2, and lambda 3 equals 3 for the three eigenvalues then of matrix A. So, now find the corresponding eigenvectors to form P. I've got D already. D is just a diagonal matrix with those as the entries. Now what about P? We'll have to go through the separate cases. Well, lambda 1 was negative 1. So putting that into A minus lambda I means the main diagonals subtract this plus 1. So that means I'll have 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 6, 0, 6, 7, 1 times the first eigenvector should equal zero. I can solve that by row reducing it. I'll row reduce this bottom row straight away so that I've got one, one, zero, because the augmented matrix we just have in this side, zero, 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 so there's no point even considering them. Uh, zero, one, one. But if I take the bottom row and subtract six of the top row, row three minus six, row one, I would have 0, 1, 1. Those two rows are the same, so this will subtract away to finally give me 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. V1 equals 0. So it's not a unique solution. There's going to be a set of solutions, but you'd expect that anyway. And just calling components of this x, x1, x2, x3, that means with the bottom row being zero, since I've only got a rank of two in this, 
one of them will be a free variable, so x3 can take the value alpha, for instance. Having done that, that means that x2 plus alpha should equal 0, so x2 will be negative alpha. Feeding that into the top one, x1 minus alpha should equal 0, so x3 will again be alpha, which means that v1 is the set of vectors in the right order, that's x1 there, alpha, negative alpha, alpha. Taking that alpha out, that gives me 1, negative 1, 1. So the eigenspace corresponding to this eigenvalue here is spanned by this vector. This one will do nicely as a basis for that eigenspace. It's got the smallest values and the least number of negatives. Smallest integers, least negatives. So I'll simply use, with alpha equal to 1, I'm going to use my first eigenvector is 1, negative 1, 1. I'll put a note of it here. Now the second one. So my second eigenvalue was negative 2. So into the matrix A minus lambda I, that means I'll be adding 2 to the main diagonal. So it'll be 2, 2, 2. 1, 0, 2, let's put them in just now. 0, 1, 6, 7. Times my second eigenvector should be 0. Now this is just a repetition, so we'll speed up a bit. Means my voice will sound a bit strange, and well, a stranger. Okay, we'll do a row reduction here to simplify the augmented matrix, which I won't bother to write down because the last name of the column is just zeros. So that'd be row 3 minus 3 row 1. So I'll leave those alone. So that'll be 0, 4, 2. That's double that row. So halving this and then subtracting the second row from it finally takes me to this then. 2, 1, 0, 0, 2, 1, 0, 0, 0. So there's a whole set of vectors here because the ranks dropped to 2, which means there's a free variable there. That free variable can be the third one. Alpha, let x3 equal alpha. So that 2x2 plus alpha is 0. So x2 would be negative a half alpha. And it says 2x1 plus x2, which is minus a half alpha, should equal 0. So taking that across and divided by 2, x1 is going to be a quarter alpha, which means I've got vector 2 being this or having this general form. A quarter alpha, stepping back up, negative a half alpha, and alpha. So that's the whole set of vectors which forms the eigenspace. Taking out, I think, the nastiest fraction, I'll take out the quarter as well, would leave me a 1, a negative 2, and a 4. Which means that this vector here, 1, negative 2, 4, can form a basis for all of these vectors, the eigenspace. So I'm going to choose my second vector, second eigenvector, to be 1, negative 2, 4. Take a note of it here. And the third one, lambda 3, which was a 3. So subtracting 3 from the main diagonal then will just make, give me a negative 3 in each case here. Remember, this is simpler than the usual ones. So that's still 1, 0, 0, 1, and 6, 7. And then the usual row reductions. Take the augmented matrix, which I won't bother to write down because it's just 0, 0, 0. And if I take row 3 plus 2 lots of row 1, I'll remove this. Negative 3, 1, 0, 0, negative 3, 1, just leaving those alone. And that'll be a 0, a 9, and a negative 3. Dividing this by negative 3 produces that row, so that's redundant then. That would subtract away to leave me negative 3, 1, 0, 0, negative 3, 1, 0, 0, 0. V3 equals 0, so that's a whole set of vectors again. They're determined by x3 being a free variable, which I can call alpha. Then negative 3x2 plus an alpha would equal 0. So x2 would be negative divided by negative will be 1 third of alpha. And negative 3x1 plus this thing plus a third of alpha should equal 0. So taking that across negative divided by negative gives me x1 equals 1 ninth of alpha. So that v3 is made up of this set of vectors. 1 ninth of alpha, 1 third of alpha, alpha. Taking out the nastiest of the fractions. And the alpha, so take out 1 ninth alpha, leaves me with a 1, 3, 9. So 1, 3, 9 forms a basis which will span this set of vectors, which is eigenspace corresponding to that eigenvalue. So I can choose V3 equal to 1, 3, 9. Take a note of it here. Which means the matrix A has now been diagonalized into the form PD, P to the negative 1, where... P equals 1, negative 1, 1, 1, negative 2, 4, 1, 3, 9, and D equals negative 1, negative 2, 3 as the diagonal matrix, negative 1, negative 2, 3, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Now, there was lots of arithmetic there, and you can check this. Another thing, I don't need to work out in this particular case the inverse of P. I won't actually need that at any point. There is one point where it seems like I'll need it, and I could use it, but I can also just use an augmented matrix to solve that equation, but that comes later. But I can check this by post-multiplying both of those by P. If that's true, then AP should equal PD. 
it's useful as a quick check before you go any further because if any of these numbers are wrong here it will mess up what's going to follow so a quick check then would be AP times P which equals now whenever you've got matrices that are full of empty entries it's quite easy to go through it that first row simply says the new first row will only contain the middle entry so that's the negative one negative two three this row the middle row says this middle row will only contain the third row position three so it'll be one four nine this is more complicated because it says it's seven of the first and six of the first and seven of the second so that will be a none of the third so it'll be six take away seven That'll be 6 take away 14. And that'll be 6 plus 21. Now check PD. Well, P is 1, 1, 1, negative 1, 2, 3, 1, 4, 9. And D is negative 1, 0, 0, 0, negative 2, 0, 0, 0, 3. It's the same with this one. You could just go ahead and multiply it if you like. But when you've got a post multiplication by a very simple matrix that's full of zeros, then you can use the column operations here. This says that the first column in my answer will be made up of the negative of the first column here. So that should be negative 1, 1, negative 1. This says the second column in the answer should be made up of the negative of the second column here. If we've got a little negative there. So that's going to be negative 2, negative 2, 4, negative 8. And this part here says the third column in the answer should be made up of three lots of the third column here. 3, 9, 27, and it is. They're correct, so this is correct, so this was correct then. Now that's the, the matrix diagonalized, so now we can change this into a diagonal form and use the substitution to finally start solving the system of equations. And that's in the next video.